welcome. Today, May 31st, 2020. Uh, welcome to this episode of the Atheist Experience. I'm Matt Dillon. Joining me this week, Don Baker. On hey, that- good to be here. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's backward when I'm not paying attention to it. How you doing, Don? I'm all right. Good to, good to, good to be here and see everybody. Yeah. Uh, as a reminder, there's a, a bunch of stuff that we've been, you know, announcing in various weeks. For example, if you're watching live on YouTube, up at the top of the screen up there, uh, there's a donate link, and 100% of your donations go directly to the ACA. YouTube doesn't take a cut of it. It's worked much better for us than uh, the Super Chat stuff and, and other things. Also, if you, do, if you don't want to or you can't do that, by all means, you can support us at patreon.com uh, slash The Atheist Experience and a number of other ways. And you can support us not just financially by actually clicking subscribe and like and passing the information about the shows on to other people who might be interested in, in what's going on. So uh, all the donations greatly appreciated. A couple of quick notes. As a reminder, we are still... Uh, doing the show entirely remotely. I'm at my house. Don's at his house. Uh, the people behind the scenes. Oh, can we show the crew cam? Because there's the people who are working behind the scenes to make this show uh, go out to all of you right now. Thanks to them and all of their hard work. Uh, that means that the number for calling in it remains the same as it has for the last few weeks, which is 512-991-9242. Sorry. 512-991-9242 instead of the one we use normally in the studio. Um, we've got a bunch of calls waiting. Don is going to have a topic that we're going to go over real quick before we start taking calls. And when Don's done right before we start taking calls, I'll talk about the call procedures. Uh, as a side note, yesterday was the atheist community of Austin's, uh, annual elections, uh, that took place. Basically we had to do it remotely and that added a number of complications, but you know, and there were some people who didn't hear about it and other stuff. There's not much else we can do about that but the election did proceed we have a new board of directors there are three people from the last board who decided not to return there are three new people on the board this year uh the information about that the announcement's going to be going up uh today i believe and silas is vice president and then there are seven other uh, board members at large including three new people uh, so that we're going to be good with treasury and secretary stuff and everything. I'm excited about what's happening moving forward. We'll do everything we can to make sure that this organization is running as best as it can because it's almost entirely a, a, a volunteer effort. And there are tons of people who are doing lots of work, and I'm not really one of them. I'm more of the, uh, the okay, let me direct traffic, and oh, everything fell apart. I, I'll, yes, now I'll buckle down. Uh, and then we'll do on the shows. So the people that I showed on the crew cam who are behind the scenes, those are some of the volunteers who aren't necessarily, some of them are on the board and some of them aren't. Uh, but that took place yesterday. The information will be up at the website as well. Uh, if anybody has any uh, questions, you can email uh, t- board at atheist-community.org. If you are a caller who wants to get through and hasn't been able to, you can email tv at atheist-community.org. That gets to myself, the other co-hosts, everybody behind the scenes. And I realize I'm being incredibly animated with my hands, and that's because somebody mentioned that I'm constantly making um, Freemason secret hand signals with my hand. <laughs> And I, I'm not a Freemason. My grandfather was a Freemason. I have no idea what sort of, sort of hand signal constitute Freemason hands. What's the hand signal for laying brick? So I'm just going to move my hands around during the opening way more than I should have just to entertain the people who thinks who think that I'm a Freemason. If, if you can't have fun, what, what else are you going to do? Here's the Illuminati, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you can do that through like, like put your fingers together like this and... Uh, I, can, I can make uh, ninja symbols as like Ran, Pyo, whoops, my fingers aren't cooperating anymore, Toe, I keep going, but uh, it's, none of that's relevant. I want to get to what you have to say and what the and what the uh, callers are, uh, so having a bit of fun. The answer to the question that a lot of people are asking is, as far as I know, Austin's stay-at-home order ended yesterday, and I have not seen an update that, that suggests that it should be continued. However, we have not reopened the ACA, and we are not sure when we are going to reopen the ACA. We will let people know here and at the website uh, and on various social media exactly what we're going to do when we reopen it, what the the policies and procedures are going to be. There is no reason for us to add the risk of a second wave, uh, especially when there's a number of people, myself included, and my partner, who are uh, high risk 
uh, for this. And so some of us are going to continue sheltering in place. The new board of directors will be having its first meeting in a couple of weeks. And one of the things we'll be discussing then is, are we ready? When are we going to be ready? And what's going on in the world to, you know, and what steps do we need to take? Uh, so we'll keep you informed there. Don Baker, it's been, you know, forever and a day since you and I got to do a show together. What are we going to talk yeah. about today? Um, you know, talk about laziness, I'm but, an expert. but, uh, to, <laughs> to get into it, um, you know, ignorance is a problem in this world. And, uh, in most situations, people want to understand their misunderstandings and, and grow and learn. And, um, you know, I'm one of the things I've done as an atheist is I've tried to embrace my mistakes and learn from them. And it's an opportunity to, uh, correct, get corrected and, and, you know, not, not be ignorant anymore, mm -hmm. but what about willful ignorance? And that seems to be rampant in religious contexts. And, uh, you know, it may be feeble mindedness that might be one of the causes, or it might be that people are just evil or maybe they're just being lazy. So I wanted to explore that today. Um, and that laziness seems to explain a lot more than just willful ignorance. Um, so today, uh, reading the Bible, one of the things that uh, you find uh, between Christian and atheist, Christians and atheists, is that as a rule, atheists tend to know their Bible better, the Bible better than most Christians. And um, I think that Christians just are content to have it spoon fed to them in church and they don't actually go crack it. Um, I, I, reading the Bible is a great path to atheism and I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, and if they were to read the Bible, they might have to uh, confront the, the, the base evil nature of the religion and the contradictions in the Bible. And they might learn that uh, it's a fictional period piece that's not a, gr a guide for operating in the real world. But so, so that may be why, why they're being lazy. What about learning Christian history? Why would Christian learn about the horrible history of Christianity? Well, why bother learning about witch burnings and inquisitions and persecution of Jews and other religious minorities? Uh, why bother reading Martin Luther's On the Jews and Their Lies, which it served as the blueprint for the Holocaust? It's better, apparently, to be lazy and, and unfortunately complicit in those things. And um, what about learning science? Uh, Christians don't actually have to learn anything about science because they can just say God did it. <laughs> God did it. And I don't, you don't need to learn anything. And why invest all that energy in scientific discovery when you can just appeal to the supernatural? Uh, how about taking care of the environment? Um, there, you hear these things that like man can't break what God created or God will fix it in the second coming or climate change is a hoax or God said to have dominion over the earth um, and all sorts of conspiracies about one world government and how, you know, climate change is going to push us towards the end times and all this crazy stuff. Um, unfortunately, Christ fixing the environment is going to take a lot of effort and conservative Christians are leading the charge against it. And um, could laziness be a part of that? And why make, why try to make the world a better place anyway? You can just pray instead. It gives you the feeling that you've done something profound, but you actually have done nothing at all. And ultimately, it's a cop out. Uh, God's, in, God's in charge of the world, and if it's screwed up, it's his it's his failed attempt at, at perfection. And why should it concern you? On the also on the subject of prayer, uh, the Bible says that uh, you can pray. Uh, Jesus says you can pray for anything you want and just and get it. And uh, so the, that begs the question, why do we still have the coronavirus? Why are we still dealing with that if you can just pray it away? Is it that Christians are too lazy to pray? Or are they too lazy to chest, test Jesus' claim? Um, and I think it's the latter, uh, because if they were actually to test it, they'd figure out the world doesn't work that way. And um, maybe... maybe uh, the answer seems to be a pray and hope for some sort of answer and, and only spend effort exerted in rationalizing why there's no response. Um, how about where does the money go to in your church? When Christians donate to church, do they check up on how the money's actually being used? Apparently not because sex abuse is common in many dom denominations and do, do Christians realize that they're, they're complicit in funding those things if they're donating to the church and not demanding that, uh, that those things be fixed? So uh, in summary, uh, maybe the best way for a Christian to be is lazy. Um, 
why go out of your way uh, to 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 fix the problems and uh, why not just wait wait here until God calls you home for your next life? So let's go on with calls, Matt. Yeah, it's a you, you know you're talking about it, and, and I get it. I I thought one of the the biggest things of, of laziness because I was guilty of it as well is something that you mentioned, which is not understanding and not bothering to look into or care about the history of the religion that you're a part of. What what most Christians that I interacted with, including myself, did is you know the preacher tells you stuff, and then when you have your your um, revival meetings and stuff like that, or your guest preachers, they come in, or you, they'll point you to somebody like Josh McDowell, and here's a book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Um, but that stuff doesn't really go through the history, and most people don't pay that much attention to it. It's like merely knowing, here's a book. You know, I, 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 have, a, I have a signed copy of Evidence That Demands a Verdict down, downstairs. I forgot to bring it up. But being able to say, look, I've got a book, the Bible, and look, here's another book, where a bunch of smart people have gone out and done all the homework for me to tell me that this other book is reliable. That's as far as they go. It's not like they've cracked the cover on it and studied it and tried to figure out what's going on. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, having a book is just sort of the beginning because you have to read it. You have to understand it. You have to think about it critically and these sorts of things. And um, that takes work. <laughs> and, and curiously, the people who actually do that work, a good chunk of them become non-believers. I mean, it's one of the things that we see when you go to a seminary that includes textual criticism and, and studies like this. You find people, at a minimum, become less fundamentalist, and and you you get more of the liberal theology stuff. And in some cases, they just you know give it up entirely. Not everybody. Certainly, there are some Christian theologians who uh, know more about all of this than I ever will or ever care to. I mean, that's undeniable. Uh, but by and large, the average person sitting in, in a pew uh, knows diddly squat about the history of their religion, you know, how the Bible came to be, which is why they think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and that like the Bible is mm -hmm. one book handed down from God. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, we're going to go on and take callers. As a reminder, uh, one of the things I forgot to note uh, along with the ability to take donations is that there's also products available and they put up a link to there. You can get your own atheist experience merch and ACA merch. Uh, the shop right there is bit.ly slash AEN merch. And that's for the entire atheist experience network stuff. Uh, when you're down there, thank you for everybody for setting that up. When we're taking callers, there's a slight extra delay. It's unavoidable. Your call has to come into a system, which then has to send it out to us. And then and we have to talk. And then when it sends back, that makes for some confusion. So I'm going to continue to make uh, liberal uh, use of the uh, hold button so that we can, you know, try for clarity. But the first caller this week, we have Andrew in Fresno, California, with, with a topic that he swears has never, ever, ever been discussed on the show ever and that actually makes me nervous because if there's something that's never been discussed on the show, is it something that needed to be discussed on the show? Because there's, I can think, I could name something that's never been discussed in the atheist experience. Um, <laughs> and we shouldn't yeah. be talking about it. <laughs> We've never talked about my left pinky toe toenail on the show until right now, but it's not relevant. But let's see what, uh, what Andrew's got. How you doing, Andrew? You're on with Don and Matt. I'm good. How are you guys? Doing well. Hello. Yes. Hi. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? What? Yes, we, we can hear, hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Good. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, I. Well, you know, you brought up the fact that um, I said it was never discussed on the show, which is the topic of morality, which has been. But I'm going to just take a. a we're going to go down a path here that I don't believe has ever been done on this show. Okay. Hey. And I want to start off with a couple of questions, and we can all participate in this um, if you guys are willing. And the first question is, do you have a moral code within yourself? Without a book or a law or anything written, do you have a moral code that's within you? Well, I, being, as, being as charitable and colloquial as I possibly can be, if it, in the sense of within me, does my brain have a collection of things that I view as a moral code? Yes. How about you, Don? Yes. Okay. The second question would be, have you ever broken that code? 
in your life from the time you can remember, as far back as you can remember, until today, have you ever broken that moral code that you have within you? Many, many times. Yes. Many, many times. Probably, probably can't count the amount of times. I, I I don't I won't say it's like astronomical, but I have no interest in counting. I can just say, yep, it's happened more than a okay. dozen times easily. All right. Okay. So now, um, the third question would be: Are you in control of yourself, your actions as a person, with your mind and your uh, physical ability? Do you have control over yourself? Is, is there such a thing as you? Yeah, I'm not completely sure how to answer that question because it it borders on the notion of free will and whether or not one could have done otherwise. But I, as far as I'm aware, have as much control over myself and my actions as any other individual in history. Okay, okay. So then what we need to do is we need to take the evidence that's available to us. Okay, so there's tons of stuff that we can look at. But one of the things I do want to look at is the Bible because it's available to us and it makes some claims. Okay. Yeah. And the claims that it makes are, um, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It also says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Right. Hey, can, we um, for God a second? Also, can we pause yes. for a second? Can we pause for a second? Yes. Why do I care about sin? Sin is okay, not. I, know, I understand. Sin but is not just I've done something immoral. Hang on. So sin is not just merely I've done something that violates my own moral code. Sin is specifically okay. doing something wrong against a God. And so if the Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, a I don't care about sin, and b I don't know how an assertion about falling short of the glory of God is relevant because my moral code doesn't include a God or give a shit about what a God thinks. Right. But I want to finish one more statement. It is. It also says that he will have a new covenant with his people, which is he's going to write his laws on their hearts and in their minds. Okay, so God established laws in our hearts and in our minds. That's what the no, Bible's no. claiming. That's what God is claiming. I, I recognize yes. the Bible's claiming that, but it's clearly not true because the Bible allows for slavery, and my moral code does not. Okay, hold on, hold on, though. Wait, 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 wait. Let's focus on. Our covenant. Let's focus on us. I don't have a covenant. You don't have a covenant. You can't have a covenant without. But let's focus on us. Let's focus on today, today, and us. Let's only focus on today and us. Okay? I, I was let's when you started that. talking. Because, when you started talking, I wasn't focused on anything other than today and us. You're the one that went back to antiquated okay, so, ideas so let's, about let's, what God let's wants. Stay, let's stay focused. Let's stay focused on that. I, I'm just I, saying. Hang on. Claim. No, no, no. Stop, Andrew. You're coming off as yes. kind of obnoxiously smug, and I know that's not what you're intending, because I'm not the one, and neither is Don, who ever moved this conversation beyond us right now. It's you who did that. So when you do that and we address it, it seems disingenuous for you to suggest that we need to stay focused on now and us when that's what Don and I are doing and you weren't. Okay, I will. I will. I will. I'm sorry. I apologize. But let, let's let's take it further now. Let's let's go to the next step. All right. So the next step is, if we have a code within us, which I do, and I've failed it, I've broken it, and Don has one, and he's broken it. You have one, and you've broken it. Now let's take a let's observe that. Let's let's make an observation. The observation would be that humans break the moral code that's within them. Okay, and that's a, a general statement, but within ourselves personally, we can say that that's correct. So secondly, we have to take a look at that even further and say, the question is then, what source or what force or what is there, what exists that's causing me to do another action other than what I want to do? So I know that it's wrong, but yet I do it. And even if I try not to do it, I do fail at, at it. And so Andrew? what is it that Andrew? exists? Yes. Andrew? I don't know why yeah. you're looking at it in the terms of what is this force that causes us? The fact of the matter, we are human beings. We are not perfect thinkers, nor are we perfect actors. We have emotion. We have needs. We have desires. We make mistakes. It is our own nature. 
when we set up a code, when I have a moral code within me, which is something that I've spent a great deal of time thinking about, it's not an answer to everything. It is a, it's, so it's not just like a list of things. It is a list of some things that are the result of a process and it's the process that matters. What I'm looking for there is an ideal. The fact that I don't always meet that ideal says nothing more than I am an imperfect being, that occasionally I'm going to do something that isn't ideal. I don't, there's no force okay. required to do this. It's already part of okay. who I am. If we were perfect, we wouldn't have needed a moral code in the first place because we would never make mistakes. The moral code is what we put there as the ideal, the goal that we are trying to achieve so that we have something to strive for to better ourselves. Correct. But the fact is that we cannot fulfill that code. No, no, and no, so, no. How, so how, how do you think that's a fact? The fact that we have messed it up doesn't mean that it's impossible for us. To, I could I could create a moral code right now that would be very easy for me to live to. Yes, correct, correct. But what I'm discussing here is the one that you have within you. So even even though hard. you didn't write everything down, you didn't write everything down and you didn't make a list, but you have something that guides you. There is something in you that guides you and helps you to understand no, no, what's right and wrong. Not, and not you keep going to this there's something in me. And and that's incredibly fuzzy language. I have Thoughts about morality that are subject to revision based on better thoughts and better information. The only the only way that it's in me is the same way that thoughts about butterflies are in me. Correct. Correct. Okay, that's fine. I'll take that uh, statement from you. But but what I'm saying is this: well, you can put it to the test and see if it's possible to live your life without breaking that code. Okay, that's make? a test you can do. Well, I, I'm, okay. I'm really desperate, Here's Andrew, for us to get anywhere near a God thing or something remotely relevant. You, if you just called in to say human beings aren't perfect and you can test this, I mean, now we're wasting a lot of time on something that's basically a tautology. All right, so so let's just, uh, okay, so then then what I'm saying is this. Since we have things in our world that we could see as evidence or something that might be true or might not be true, such as the Bible, the Quran, Buddha, all these other religions. Okay, we have these things that we can look at, we can read them, we can study them, and, and they're giving us these statements. And the statement is, you've sinned, you've made mistakes, you need forgiveness, right? It, 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 there has to be some type of justice for those mistakes that were made. And we, no. even as humans, we, we fulfill no. that justice, right? No, no, sir. Sin is an evil no. concept. There, there is no guarantee of... No, no, no. What I'm there saying is the wrongs that you've done. The wrongs Andrew? that you've done. No. Yes. There is no guarantee of justice. And what you're saying here, okay, I'm, I'm trying to, to I've, I, we've let you talk and talk. I'm trying to let you get to the point that you're trying to get to. So can we get there? Okay. Because so, you, you, keep, you keep wanting to say, look, it's true that we fail. And this book tells us we fail. Well, you know what else that book tells me? That book tells me that it's okay to own slaves as long as you don't beat them within a day. That, that, that book tells me that we're back okay. to an old covenant. Stop interrupting me. Bring back to an old Andrew, stop interrupting me. That book tells us it sanctions slavery. That book sanctions genocide. That book sanctions for groups of people to take the young uh, virgin girls and keep them for themselves. That book sanctions women as a second class tier of, of, of uh, person. If, if a book tells me some things that are true and some things that are not true, what use is the book? I figured out what was true and what was not true, irrespective of that book. Okay, so you're you were a Christian, right? Once upon a time. Okay, and so as a Christian, you understood that there was an old covenant and a new one, right? Yes, and now I don't give a shit about either one of them because there's no demonstration that there's actually a God to have covenant with. I so why are we? You wanted to keep this about us in the here and now. Why do you keep going back to antiquity? You, so, you so did. Jesus you brought supposedly the old is going to torture you if you don't follow. No, him. Andrew. I did not go back to that. You brought up the Bible and the Quran, and I pointed out that they are in conflict. Okay. So, okay. If you want to look at scripture then, which you you brought it up. But, okay. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Let's just get to, let me just make a statement. I'll just finish okay. with a statement. All right. 
And the statement is, and I'm going to say if, if, because we, we're not sure of anything, right? That's, your, that's what you've said. We're not sure, absolutely, positively sure of anything. Absolutely sure. Okay, so let's just say, if the statements that the Bible are, say are true, which is that we've made mistakes, we've broken that code of, of, of morals, and we need forgiveness for that, then we all, three of us, are guilty and need forgiveness. If that statement is true, then we can admit to ourselves, yes, I've broken the code. Yes, I have a morality within me that I've broken, and I would need forgiveness if God exists. At least we can go that far with the statement. Not, not to say that God exists on your part, but you can at least stop and think about that and say, Holy I shit. have broken Holy that Shut up, man. Holy right? Stop. <laughs> Do you literally think that in the entire history of the show, nobody has ever, ever, ever discussed the fact that if we have, if God is real and we have broken God's law, that we need forgiveness? Do you, do you remotely think that's never been discussed on this show? Not the written law. Not the written law. I'm talking about the moral code within yourself that you automatically know. My moral code within it. myself does not match up to the Bible at all not one i mean incidentally but do you think for a second what you just said is if the statements in the bible first of all you suggested we stay with us with the here and now but you keep going back to the bible and what you just said because i typed it was if the statements in the bible are true then we have failed and need forgiveness then we could admit to ourselves that we need forgiveness from god now do you really think that nobody in the history of the show has called in to suggest that if the Bible is true and we acknowledge that we have not lived up to it, we need forgiveness? What I'm specifically speaking I asked a yes or no question. Do I believe that that's never been discussed? No. Then what is it that you think you're presenting that has never, ever been discussed? And before you answer... It's not just that it's never, ever been discussed. It's that this line is, this is a garbage argument it, because the, gar the argument begins with, if the, what the Bible says is true, well, hang on. The Bible says a lot of things. So let's say, the, but let's say just for the sake of simplicity, the Bible says 10 things and eight of them aren't true. Does that tell us anything at all about whether the other two are true or not? No, I'm specifically speaking Correct. about what you know. And, and if the know. Bible and if the Bible says ten things and we can identify two of them as true, does that tell us anything about the other eight, whether they're true or not? Well, we would have to determine what's true no. and what's not true. Does right? the we fact that to... the Bible says two things that are true tell us whether or not the eight other things it says says are true or not? No, it doesn't. Right. So when you start off your argument with if the Bible if what the Bible says is true. You are now just creating a tautology that if the Bible's right about this and the Bible's right about this, then we should be accepting or looking for forgiveness for, for our sins. That is a tautology. Okay. So, and so your entire so argument, the Bible is, your entire argument is circular. And do you think this is the first time somebody's called in with a circular argument? Let's let's leave the Bible out of it completely. I tried to leave the Bible that. out of it for a while. Let's unless Don it. has something else let's to add. It. Unless Don has something else to add to this, yeah, I do. The I thing do. that I'm uh, and I'm going to let him. The thing that I'm going to leave out of this conversation, Andrew, is you. Go ahead, Don. Why do I need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? Why do you need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? Um, okay. If you want to view God as an invisible mass murderer, you can. That's your choice. But that's not who he is. Really? <laughs> really? Can we... He, is, is, is he visible? It, can, does God exist, Andrew? <laughs> What's that? Does God exist? I believe he does. Is he visible? No, he is not. Has he killed people? Lots and lots and lots of people. Does God have the ability to give life? Do you believe that God killed lots and lots of people? Do you believe that God has the ability to give life? Do you believe that God killed lots and lots of people? I don't believe that God exists. I don't believe he has the ability to give life. I'm asking you, you believe that God exists. You believe he's not visible. Do you believe that he killed lots and lots of people? Yes. So 
when Don calls him an invisible mass murderer, every everything that you just agreed to affirms that, right? Not not murder. Oh, why is it not murder? Oh, it's because murder is a specific legal construct and not just killing. So Don should have said an invisible mass slaughterer. Yep, I stand corrected. Well, you're, you're looking at something that exists, which I believe is God, that is not limited to human traits, all right? And you're putting God down in this small little box as a human. When he's no, not. I'm not. No, not I'm not. That. If No, I'm not putting God yes. down in a box as a human. Yes, you, you are. You are wanting to excuse God from any moral culpability for the actions that you think he did. Not correct. That's not true. Okay. So in your view, do I have the right to kill Don whenever I want? Can you bring Don back to life? I. That's not the, did I, could I ask a question? Is that an answer to my question? To, Are you going to answer my question is, or am I hanging up on you? No, I answered the question. No, you didn't. I said, do I have the right to kill Don whenever I want? No. Does God Absolutely have the right not. to kill Don whenever he wants? God has the ability to kill or give life. Does God have the oh. right to kill Don whenever he wants? Only just if... Just Goodbye, if Andrew. Every time I ask well, you a true. question, you it's deflect. True, you, every time I ask you a question, you deflect and go off onto something yes. else. You want I to clarify? Yes and no. No, you didn't go back and clarify. You did not, in fact, do that. Well, Don, it's invisible mass slaughterer. Yes, thank you. And perhaps fictional invisible mass slaughterer. Well, that puts the burden of proof on us, right? Well, it, it is, I would argue that something is, in fact, fictional until it has been dis demonstrated to be non fictional. That existence okay. is the thing that needs to be demonstrated, not non-existence, because how could you demonstrate that? This is, this is just establishing the default position. So, yeah, there's a call we've never, ever had in the history of the show. <laughs> never, ever, ever has somebody suggested that if the Bible is true, you and I should repent. Yeah. You know, me for being a, 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 a smug, dismissive, um, foul-mouthed, um, Oh, what, what's it? What's another one? I can, I can throw in a whole bunch. Well, don't forget, Matt, that if we're if, if we don't repent, we're going to get tortured. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that fun? God, God loves you so much. <laughs> it's wild. We have uh, Julian in Ottawa with evidence for God. So, bring it on, Julian. How you doing? Not too bad. How are you guys? Good. Uh, hoping hoping Hello. for people who will be able to answer questions. <laughs> Can you guys hear me properly? I just want to make sure. Yes. And by the way, okay. no, you, people don't need to ask if we can hear them when they call, call into the show. Uh, if we can't, it'll be obvious real quick. And considering we're talking to you, go for it. That's very true. Uh, okay. So I want to break down why there is a God and not in a religious way that most of the uh, theists usually call about. What God are we talking about then? I'm talking about a higher, like, when you are when you say you're an atheist, does that mean you don't believe in a higher power? Or what do you, you mean by higher power? A religious God. What, I don't know what you mean by higher power. I, if, you're, if we're going to talk about a God, we, it needs to be defined pretty clearly. Higher power is just lofty language that doesn't actually convey any information. Well, let's just let's just call it creator then. A creator of what? Like I, cre I know lots of creators. I'm a creator. A creator. Well, how did the Big Bang happen? So, uh, I, I have no idea. Don, do you know how the Big Bang happened? No, I don't. I, I don't even know. First of all, I, I don't. I wouldn't even say I know that the Big Bang happened. It's just the Big Bang cosmology is the current best explanation of all the relevant facts that are that that are trying to describe the origin of the universe. I don't know how it happened why it happened. Um, you believe it's a fact, though. You just said it was a fact. No, actually, what I just... It's like, it's like people don't listen to me at all. Let me, let me rewind this and do this again, Julian. I literally just said, I do not know that it happened. 
I'm not asserting it's a fact. I said it was the current best scientific explanation for the origin of the universe. I literally said, I do not know that it happened. And your first thing that you direct at me is, is accusing me of saying it's a fact. I don't know how the no, universe is. Wait, 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 I don't wait, know wait, that the Big Bang cosmology is, is, are you just going to, I don't know how the universe began. And I don't know the Big Bang cosmology is the actual answer. I just know it's the current best scientific explanation that accounts for the facts. Now, what God are we talking about? Guy, right? Sorry, what? Okay, you're, you're a scientific guy, right? If, if science says the Big Bang happened, why do you not have probable cause to believe that there was a Big Bang? Because science doesn't say the Big Bang happened. Science isn't making proclamations of truth. Science is saying this particular model is the current best explanation, and it is subject to revision, as are all scientific models, because they're tentative. I accept that. I accept all of that, that this is the best current model. Science doesn't make proclamations of truth. Science doesn't make statements that this is the way it was. It says this is our best understanding. So that, therefore, it could be BS. For well, it could be There's no, because adding. BS is generally used for when somebody is intentionally deceiving. Is it possible the Big Bang cosmology is not an accurate model? Yes. But we need to have a lot of evidence for that. And, right. I, and whatever replaces the Big Bang would need to have better evidence than, than we have for the Big Bang. Exactly. And still, we haven't gotten to what it God... Has to be a, well, the God I'm talking about is not a God of religion, right? He's a God that... He's not a person like a man. You can't be like, that's God. He has a beard. He's he's uh, given orders. He's building things, whatever. Stop telling, tell stop me, telling me what he's talking about. Yeah, tell us what he is, tell not what he is. is. <laughs> and and what, let me remove the he from that. <laughs> tell us what... Define the God you're talking about, because it may well be a God I don't give a fuck about. Well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't care about us either. Because, well, do you believe in aliens? If there's aliens, there's got to be. Oh aliens. my God! There's other. If there's other. Julian, you, Julian, you just suggested. You, you just you just suggested that this God isn't a person, but that maybe he doesn't care about us. And then you move on to aliens. Define your God, or I'm moving on to another call. I think God created himself. Uh, I think God created this world to experience. Okay. Julian, you're muted. I didn't hang up on you. I'm, I muted you so that you could listen to Don and I for a second. I asked you to define your God. And what did you start with? I think God created himself. That's not a definition of a God. That's not even describing God's characteristics. You're telling us what you think is true about what this God did or didn't do. All we wanted was for you to define your God so that you can go on this. If, if you can't do that, then put the bong down Get some paper and work this out and call us back. I'll give you one more shot. Define God. Okay, so God, God's the creator. Creator of what? Creation. Creator okay. of energy. No, 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 no. You can't say creator of creation. You, you don't get to say that there is a creation in order to confirm a creator. What did God create? He created energy. How do you know this? Like, uh, we can testify energy, right? We can testify energy? Could, what the fuck does that mean? No, we could prove energy. We can prove energy is real, right? It, it's scientific. They could prove energy exists. Yes, but, but we can't prove that energy had an origin or that God created energy because the, the laws of thermodynamics are such that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And so now you're arguing that there's someone who created something that science is saying can't be created or, or destroyed. And all I've asked you is, how do you know, how can you demonstrate that God created energy? Uh, well, that's a, that's a tough one, right? That's a tough yeah, one. you should have thought of that before you called in. I don't in. think anybody... If you're... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're moving on. Ooh. Hey, well, there's the e equals MC squared thing too, but that doesn't get you any closer to God. Yeah, it's like, I'd like to call <laughs> in and prove this God. And I want to talk about fourth dimensions and fifth dimensions, which was stuff in the call screening thing that he didn't even get to. I want to talk about this God thing. Okay, define it. I think God created himself. No, 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 define it. Oh, uh, 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 God is the creator of creation. No, 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 you can't do that. God is the creator of energy. How do you know that? Ooh, that's a tough one. What the fuck were you calling about? 
I've never thought about that question. Ask God for help. (laughs) I thought I'd just call into the atheist experience and say, you know what? I believe there's a God, but it's really tough to prove. (laughs) Uh, I can't even believe that. Like, like, Don, how many years have you done this show now? Is it, have you done it 20 years? Have you done it? 10, 10, 12, 15, some, 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 some large number. I've done it 15 okay. and you were around before me by a year uh, or two. Year or two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, You've got more miles on you. So the first call that we took, the, yeah, well, I've done, I've done more episodes, but that doesn't mean anything. The first call that we take calls in to suggest that they're going to present something that has never, ever, ever been presented on the show. And literally it's a, in a sort of, yeah, but you, you took the bait, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like <laughs> the Eric Alter call is what that guy did. If the Bible is true, you better repent. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy. And if frogs had wings, they wouldn't bump their asses hopping. But, and then we get, we get, they get the guy that wants to prove God. But when we get to the actual question of how can you prove that? I think God created energy. Cool. How do you prove that? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. You know what's not tough? Moving on. Moving on. We have uh, Keon in Utah wanting to know how did we get our first babies and who raised them? Is that is that right, Keon? Yeah. That's the truth. That's correct. Uh, so, Dom, but man, yeah, yeah. The mothers of the babies raised them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? So, no, listen. Do you, do Are you, you serious? serious? <laughs> That's not true. No, no, yeah. listen, listen. No, listen. I should have known because I got familiar with you guys as of lately. My buddy showed me a video of one of you guys saying, you came from your mother or something. But look, though, what yeah. I meant by that was, okay, let me be specific. <clears throat> so we all could agree that science knows enough because I hear you guys talking. It sounds like science tells you a lot, right? So, okay, let's go back with science. We can go back to DNA and say, well, it's safe to say that we agree that we were in pools of water or whatever the case was, and we climbed out. During those times, Mother, was it Mother Nature, Mother Earth, when we were monkeys? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. I think you're talking about biogenesis. You gave us the common knowledge that we have as humans. That's why. Hold on. I'm about to to give you the floor because you got your little radio show. I'm about to shut up. I'm trying to understand you. I'm trying to understand 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 you. I'm going to put you on hold. If we're saying we can't understand you and we need you to repeat or clarify something, that's what we're doing. So it seems seems to us that you keep saying we, and, and clearly you just mean humanity. At right. times, but then at times I'm also meaning you and Don, Don Baker, okay. Matt, whichever. And, and, and do you see how that can be confusing when you use the same word to mean two different things? I do understand. I do understand. But I thought the level of intelligence that you guys carry for me watching your videos that we would like relate. But you're right. I should be very much more direct in this time. So I will. My bad. I hear you. Well, you know, whatever, whatever our level of intelligence is, you, you asked who took care of babies, and I'm like, their moms did. Now, if you, want to trace, <laughs> if you want to trace back ancestry, and you're trying to figure out when did human beings branch off from the other great apes, you can read the science books and actually look at this to show w- what we've learned about this. We don't have an explanation for anything. If you then continue going back through, through the course of all living things on earth, you can then find when placental mammals began. And that will tell you when babies uh, that were, needed to be cared for actually uh, existed. And prior to that, you would have egg laying things and uh, uh, other things along those lines. And some species did not require any sort of nurturing for their kids. They just dump a whole bunch of eggs out there and the ones that survive that survive. There are a number of different, um, there are a number of different strategies that, that, that evolution or that life has developed to deal with offspring were one of them. Is it a- let me, let me jump in real quick. Um, uh, along these lines, there's a book called the ancestors tale call uh, by Richard Dawkins that sort of does the walk from where we are now back to where we came from and um, all the sort of uh, important steps along the way. And that may be a good book to, to check out after the call. But go ahead. Okay, that's cool. I appreciate that. But okay, thank you very much. So what I was asking really in, in reality is, right, if you have an idea of when the first so-called mothers 
gained the human knowledge that humans have. I'm not talking about mammals and chickens and the first eggs and none of that. I'm talking about the divine human understanding that we have today. That's why people say evolution came. Well, why are we not? Ba- if we have a two humans have a baby right now and leave it there, it's not going to raise itself up to be a common knowledge having human that we are today. You understand let me, what I'm let me saying? Let try to answer that. There, there were no first humans. There were only, there was a gradual change from earlier species to human species. And there's no point at which you can say magically these folks were humans and the, their parents were not humans. So the, the whole idea of a first human is, is kind of a, a wrong way of thinking about it. I also don't know what you mean. By divine, I also don't know what you mean by divine human understanding. Like, Self, like, okay, to be where we are today from out of, like, a pool of DNA since we know, you know, familiar with science. You get it? That's not, like, how. Stop. That's why babies are still not popping babies out. A baby can't wipe its own, you know, behind. A human baby, a human human baby requires more nurturing than other babies. Right. So how are we nurtured from a pool of nothing to who we are? Human didn't come from a pool of nothing. I'm sorry? Humans did not come from a pool of nothing. Humans are apes that evolved from other apes, which evolved from other mammals, which evolved from a line of placental mammals, which evolved from other life forms. Okay, cool. So you guys don't believe in the um, out of the uh, a big mass of um, water, and then DNA came from out of the ocean, and then became we became land creatures. So you don't believe in that we started in the oceans and climbed to. So uh, that is, there are many. There I'm are just many. Asking, I'm just asking. Oh my God! Can I fucking answer? I know you're just asking. Yeah. Why would you need to tell okay. me you're just okay. asking when I start to answer your question? Hold on, bro. Can you tell me? Up? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. So we don't know how life began. There are a number of different models about how life began. But but even if we went with the pool of self-replicating mod molecules, the primordial ooze, it's not humans that walked out of there. It's single-celled organisms that replicated. And those begin processing over millions of years into other life forms. Humans didn't just step out of a pool of goo. Life, The complexity and the diversity of life spread as changes in DNA resulted in changes in those entities. At some point, the the egg-laying offspring became a thing, and that split into whether those eggs stay inside for the duration and gestate with a a soft thing, as in in the way of humans and many others, and have those those animals that give live birth. And in other cases, you know, like look at a chicken, it does not give live birth. It lays an egg, and that le- egg is is taken care of outside of there. Okay. Thank you so much for helping me understand divine knowledge of creation and how humans became so advanced and involved. No, well, they sarcastic with me, shit. Anyhow, well, I, I you asked you, man. I like I, how I, I asked you. What do you ask? Why? why are, I asked you what you meant by divine human understanding, and now you're sarcastically coming back. Uh, thanking us for explaining it when I still don't know what the hell divine human understanding is, or I don't think there's anything divine. I'm familiar with God because I also seen another show when one of the two of you, I don't know which one exactly I'm talking to. That's why I say y'all sometimes. You know, I don't know if it's this mad bait, bait, down, bait, that's, you know. That's, that's fine. It's the group. It's not the point. So, what, it, what the fuck is divine human understanding? The, well, is it safe to say one of you been in church and saw something in church yourself? I spent my, I was going to be a preacher. I was in church from the time I was born until I was probably 25 or 30. Now, what is it that you think I should have seen in a church? I can't tell you what you should see. That's like my friend, he asked me, how come everybody doesn't have a relationship with God? I can't tell you. You just asked what me. What I can. You, Keon, you said I'm, you, you were assuming that we had been in church and seen something. That was your question. And I said, yes, I I've heard been one of your shows. What was I supposed where one to one of you, I can't tell you what the two it was, but one of yeah. you said, Can you, you've seen something, stop. what you've seen in church. Stop. So if you've seen something in church. <clears throat> Leon, I'm asking you what it is that you think we've seen in church. I can't, man. I'm telling you, I heard you. One of you on the show say that. I can't. Oh, my God. My friend just pointed and said, Matt. He pointed at you and said, Matt, he watches this more than me. Leon, 
Southern Baptist? Okay. Dion. So it was you who seen Dion. what you saw in church, bro. Dion. So to me, that's divine intervention, Dion. just like you know it, sir. Yeah. Keon. I'm just going to keep doing this since yeah. you're just ignoring me. Keon. I'm listening. I'm listening. Yes. Yeah, no, you're not. You're fucking talking. You said you assumed that I'd been to church and seen something. And I said, yes, I've been to church. What is it that you think I have seen? Divine intervention. Whatever you asked me what divine was, you know it, you felt it, and you see it. That's why you No, I haven't. That's now. why I'm asking, Keon. I'm asking you to tell me what it is that you think I've seen and what it, what it is that you think is, is divine. That's why I keep asking the question. No, because you want me to be like I was there all those times. I no, I'm not opinion. asking you to be there. I'm asking you what it is that you imagine that I have seen that is relevant to this discussion. The fact that you know... But that I know. I know what? And that's... The fact that I know what? what you're denying. Everything you deny, you know. Okay. Can and you're you, accountable can you, can for you all of what you know. English, can you speak an English sentence that adds clarity? Because now, now you're saying... English, you everything, are accountable for now you're everything, saying everything, everything I deny, I know. What is it that you think I know that I'm denying? And where you're at now. Because you saw what I saw and you know what I know. And you know what the... I think he's okay, saying that God we're denying God, God and God no, no, is going to torture us. No, 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 no. <laughs> now you're on hold because now you're telling me that you know what's in my head and you further, you're suggesting that I know what you know. And that, sir, is dishonest. So what is it that you think I know that I am denying? I think you know that there is a divine, true creator and you got lost along your path. And I'm not judging you for that. That's not my job. No, I'm not here, here for that. I don't know. Please demonstrate. I'm not saying you finna burn or whatever. Keon, Keon if you're going to accuse me, basically you're saying I'm a liar. I said these are my opinions, bro. Are, 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 you, no saying I'm a, are you saying I'm a liar? I just feel as if you're misled. I'm not saying are, you're are lying. You saying you I'm, a liar. I'm not accusing you of anything, sir. No, I'm not. Yes, I don't you know are. You you're accusing you me. You might accidentally be doing this. I'm going to mute your ass again because you are accusing me of denying something that I know is true. If somebody knows something is true and they deny it, are they a liar? I would not say it to you. If somebody knows something is true and they are denying it, are they a liar? Well, see, I, to me, yes, but I can't say that you okay. know... Then you're calling me a liar because you accuse me of knowing something and denying you it. You are right about what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? No, no Keon. You might you not are, be doing you, it purposefully. Yeah. You might not be doing it on purpose, yeah. sir. So Did I cannot you, call somebody who is accidentally doing something. I don't call you a liar, Matt. I don't purpose. care if you, Keon. I, I can't say that if you're not doing it on purpose, sir. I mean, like, because you don't know. You could be misled. Like, if I accidentally say the wrong thing. it again. You'll stay on mute for the rest of your life, for all I care. If you're going to tell me that I am denying something that I know to be true, and I ask you if that makes someone a liar, why are you not willing to just say that, yes, you think I'm a liar? Why is it so difficult? Why is it so easy for you to make the accusation vaguely, but not say, yes, you believe that I am a liar? Huh? He doesn't want to disparage you. I'm not, no, because I don't want to, I don't want to give anybody any credit or take any away from anything that's not due. I can't give you a jacket Goodbye, that I'm man. not putting on you. I'm not calling you a liar, sir. I'm just Goodbye. saying, to me, you're Goodbye. misled. You, that, you, was sir? My, that was my point. You're very Now you're muted. You, sir, are a coward. And now I'm going to unmute you so that you can respond to me calling you a coward. And then I'm going to hang up on you. I you sir are a coward does that make you feel better you that mad bro <laughs> you called me a liar That's but you're you called me a liar i never say i say very misled sir i don't know if you're doing it on purpose or not sir That's not my fault then somebody said oh you're yeah, gonna turn i ain't say nothing about all of that bro i don't know about all of that i'm just telling you what yeah. i know about yeah, yeah, every week here we're yeah. asking for evidence for god if you've got some evidence we'd uh, love to hear it it's, hey, just the way his emotions were was evidence of God. Both of y'all shook up right now. I have someone here. I know what time it is. So y'all can get rattled. I'm going to mute you. 
If you think you rattled me, that's really easy to do when someone is dishonest and cowardly like you, when they come in and suggest that I, I, am, I am actually denying a truth that I am aware of and then refusing to acknowledge that this is exactly the same as calling me a liar. And when you are calling in to prove that a God exists and your argument is essentially, Matt, you know there's a God, you're just denying it, then you're not only a coward, but you are massively confused about the way evidence works, and you are pretending that you can read my mind. Because as I asked you, you seem to think that I witnessed the divine in the same way that you did, and now I'm just denying it, when that is simply not true. So maybe stop pretending you can read people's mind, and if you're going to actually call someone a name or make an accusation that they are dishonest, perhaps go ahead and do it in a forthright manner, as I did when I called you a coward. And now I'm hanging up. Goodbye, Keon. I'm not going to sit here and let someone call me a liar and pretend that they know what's going on in my head more than I do. It's just yeah. not going to fucking happen. Uh, we're at like 530. We got a whole ton of callers left. Uh, how are you doing, Don? I'm 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 great. It's weird that he didn't. Well, I know why he didn't call you a liar because he doesn't know that you uh, might have been in church and seen the things that he. I try to avoid churches if I can. <laughs> I get stuck in them for weddings and funerals sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Here's a tip: if you're going to call into the show and you haven't thought out an argument, okay, we can we can work with that. But if you're not going to be an honest interlocutor, if you're not going to answer the questions that are asked without deflection. If you're just going to suggest that, that that your best argument for God is that we all know there's a God, we're just act, you know, we're just denying it. Uh, you're not going to get anywhere. I I think that uh, reading between the lines, I think that he he actually has never met an atheist before, and and is just kind of shocked that we even exist. It, it may be, but he also hasn't studied biology. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, and I get it. It's confusing because. We, we, when you try to process this and you think backwards in time, it's like, oh, well, where did you come from? My parents. Where did they come from? Their parents. Where did they come yeah. from? Their parents. And, and it's like, oh, there must be an infinite regress of, of that. And yes, there is an infinite regress of ancestors up until the time when life began, but not necessarily ancestors that were viewed as parents, just progenitors. Like, right. it, here's a self-replicating thing that has offspring. Mm-hmm. And, or made a copy of itself somehow, yeah. right? And future generations get more complex, and some of them need more, and some of them need less. But uh, here's somebody that actually wants to talk about the topic. So I will. Uh, Dave in Utah wants to talk about Christian laziness. All right, Dave. And and uh, go for it. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? All right. Good. Okay. Um. Well, first of all, I just kind of want to understand your premise, I mean, your presupposition um, of the topic. Um, what brought you to the topic of the belief or maybe the, um, I don't know, observation that Christians are lazy? Oh, you know, um, I come to various things, and, and uh, I seem to have found uh, – uh, a bunch of examples here. We can maybe uh, unpack one of the examples. Uh, did you have one in particular you were interested in, or? Uh... Well, no. That would require you to tell me because okay. you're the one that it's maybe, your premise. Maybe there's some confusion here. Um, I don't know that Don or I are necessarily saying that Christians are more lazy than anybody else who's part of any other religion. Oh, okay. But what I do know okay. is that when we do studies to show who knows and understands more about, for example, the Bible, atheists win. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, right, okay. suggests if you don't know enough about your religion, um, that suggests some level of laziness. Yeah, that's, that's oh, pretty so you're, much you're what talking we're about saying. In relation, oh, so this is in relationship to the biblical study. No, yeah, so as a rule, the, as a rule, uh, atheists score flawed. better on on tests about the Bible than than Christians do. So, um, you know, if Christians were you know understanding their Bible and working working and understanding it, that would be the other way around, right? Gotcha. Okay, so this isn't a matter of slothful, being slothful, meaning you don't have a job. 
No. It, this is this is in relationship to study of biblical. biblical. Yeah, I mean that was one of the topics. Uh, another one was learning oh, okay. Christian history. Well, well, another was learning science. Another was taking care of the environment. Uh, oh, okay. Prayer. Hmm. Those sorts oh, well, of things. Pretty, so that, that's pretty. That's pretty broad. Yeah. Yeah. It's embarrassing to be living in the 21st century and have people, you know, g going out and suggesting that uh, there's a God that gave us the planet to be stewards of. And so they don't have to worry about how they take care of it. Now, granted, does every Christian think that? No. But, you know, it's the shit that Rush Limbaugh was peddling. It's, uh, you know, a number of other fundamentalist churches are peddling views about humanity and human beings that are not consistent with better moral positions, a general, I mean, the callers who called in before with a general ignorance of science and an inability to argue for this, who don't even know uh, the history of their own religion or anything else. I, I didn't know when I was a believer and it was actually studying and learning that, and, you know, and ending my, my lazy acceptance of uh, a version of Christianity that got me out of it. Not, we're not saying every Christian is this way. And as a matter of fact, when we started the show, I pointed out that there are Christian theologians who are not lazy, who know all of this stuff better than I will. Okay. Well, that that's good. That's refreshing to know because I agree with you that there are individuals outside of the faith that know more about the faith than the people within it. I would agree. Um, but I also know there's people within it that know more about it than the people without Sure. So I would have to agree on that. I, so, I'm so not sure. That why, do, why do you think it is that that it, it's so common that people claim to believe something, but they don't understand it? Well, I think in some cases it's a matter of adoption. And the reason why I use the word adoption is they adopt ideas. They adopt them, meaning they didn't cultivate yeah, like, them like pets, from within right? their own <laughs> They didn't. They didn't. They didn't cultivate them within their own intellectual rigor. They. 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 They were hand ideas. Ideologies were handed down to people. Yep. Yep. And that's there, sort of what I'm arguing. There are other individuals. Against. No, I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm relaying to you. I'm. I'm answering that question. Yeah, I do. I appreciate it, and I agree. Is, you asked. Okay. And that's my answer. The reason why, why do you think that is? My answer is some people adopt their ideologies. They don't go through the intellectual rigor to cultivate their own stand on issues. And that's my answer. That's why that phenomenon yep. exists. Yeah. And I would, you know, I'm granted, I was in church for many, many years and by and large, let's like, let's say I was in a, I was, I was in a decent sized church for the eighties where, you know, where there were several hundred people and it was a pretty good sized church. It's not like a mega church now. Um, but we, we taught and we all understood there were people in the church who, you know, weren't true followers of Christ, but also we understood, and, and it was pretty straightforward that if you're coming there to be taught, then clearly there are things to learn that you're unaware of. But I think we all would recognize that the majority of people sitting in pews, in if you if you took everybody who was in a pew on a Sunday morning in the United States, a vanishingly small percentage of them could be viewed as reasonable experts on Christianity. Not, not I mean, on the on the history, on the Bible, everything else. Not what it what it is, what it means to them. Everybody's an expert on what it means to them. But by and large, I mean, I, I get. I, I interact with people in church and out of church on a regular basis who still think that the guy, matter of fact, I just did a debate last month from somebody who thinks that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the overwhelming majority of Christian New Testament scholars just acknowledge that that's not the case. Well, that depends on who, um, if you believe that the oral story was captured and scribed by an individual other than the individual it's attributed to. It, it, it has to be. Um, well, all right, let me, let me correct that. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, the Gospels are unsigned. We have no originals. The best copies uh, uh, don't reflect an eyewitness testimony. They reflect copying from each other and are decades afterwards. The bulk of New Testament scholars within Christianity and without 
do not think that the Gospels were written by the individuals whose names are ascribed to them. And if you pick up like an NIV, it will literally say that on the cover page for like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that we don't know who the author is and that this is a matter of church tradition. Now, what the truth is, I'm not going to say, but the fact that most people sitting in the pews don't know that at all, I think that's a problem. And it's a problem that, that indicates that they're being lazy, that they've been taught things and haven't done any investigation. Okay. Would be that some people are. Some people are. Um, my concern is the show. I'm, I'm sorry, you broke up. Can you say that again? Um, yeah. Um, when I could, I just want to make sure because when I tuned into the show, I was hearing the topic, and I, I just want to make sure. Are you familiar with the um, psychological con- concept of projection? Yes. Yes. Okay. Have you ever caught yourself doing that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you guys weren't doing that. Do you think we are? It, it, yeah. If you think, think we are, uh, by all means, point it As out. As somebody who spent the last 15 years of his life actively engaged in this, coming from a background where I was studying to be a preacher and found my way out, uh, I don't think I'm projecting because I'm recognizing that I used to be lazy about these subjects, and now I'm not. Okay. Although perhaps I'm more lazy now than I was seven years ago because there's nothing new and it becomes mind-numbingly uh, taxing to keep going over and over and over the same thing. So if you think you if you think we are, by all means, point it out and we can have a discussion about it. No, I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't the case. I'm not. This isn't an accusation. Okay. Because... The fact that you the, the fact that he answered the questions, it's fine. No need to be defensive. It's fine. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that's not the case here. And so, um, I'm treating it as a learning are, opportunity. You know, I make mistakes all the time, and I do do incorrect things all the time. And I'm, you know, I try to smile and grin and bear it when somebody points it out. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to hear, but you know, uh, right. I'm a better person at the end of the day if I. Take, take it into account. Okay, beautiful. Um, so I got another, can I, can I bring up another topic? Is it okay? I'll be brief. It's a, it's more of a question. It's not a topic. Sure. We can try and do it quickly. There's a bunch of other callers waiting and we've got like 20 plus minutes left. So, but go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, how would you define a couple of terms? One well, one, faith, how would you, how, just the word, how would you define faith, and how would you define the word hope? And then lastly, how would you, what is your method, how is, what is the method you use to determine truth? Sure. Um, I can do all three of those pretty quickly, and then Don can agree, correct, expand, whatever else. Faith is the excuse people give for believing in something when they don't have a good reason, because if you have a good reason, you never make an appeal to faith. You always just give the good reason. Hope is an optimistic uh, preference for a desirable outcome that is not necessarily uh, what is going to happen or is likely going to happen. And truth is that which conforms to reality. Whether or not we can identify that or confirm it, is a huge problem about whether or not we actually have access to truth. So the, the, the consistent with reality uh, as best we can, it's like, just because I experienced something doesn't mean that my understanding of it is true. Like I, I could see something that I describe as an apparition and a ghost, and it would be a mistake for me to say, I saw a ghost. What would be true is I experienced something that I am interpreting as a ghost and then it's independent verification from others using things like the scientific method that lead us to the best approximation of truth that we can get to. Gotcha. So basically truth. Well, I want to let Don jump in to correct. No, 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 that's fine. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Okay. Well, we, I think we have my lost Dave, Dave. No, I'm here. Okay. You, you have a question about truth or something? You know, what I'm saying is, and so basically what you're saying is truth cannot be known. We can only um, come to an approximation of it. No, what I'm saying is I, I, I see no pathway to absolute certainty anywhere. Truth 
so it, whether or not truth with a capital T is accessible, I don't know. So I couldn't say we can't know it. All I can say is it's it's kind of like the you familiar with like the problem of hard solipsism. I can't prove that other minds exist because at some point the reasoning just breaks down because I have to depend on other people's experience, but I don't know that those other people aren't something that I invented. So there's this cascade effect where you can't get to a foundation. So I can't be absolutely certain about anything, but I experience a reality. And what I would de describe as true is that those things, which to the best of our ability to identify them are actually consistent with what I and others experience in reality. Okay. Um, so if I may, um, could I update your uh, de definition of faith um, uh, using okay. etymology as my source? Well, the, the thing is, is that words don't have intrinsic meaning. Ah, so okay. wor words are all about... Why don't we use them? And so you asked for my <laughs> definition of faith, and I gave it to you. So I don't know what it is they're correct about my definition of faith. Because um, well, faith, let me take, faith let me itself, take a well, you can't correct my definition of faith. Because we're, we're, I'm saying okay, this is okay, my usage, this is how I use it. Oh. Okay, can I give you mine? Sure. Okay. And I'm using etymology, the source, meaning the study of the root of language. I, 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 I understand know exactly faith. what etymology means. Okay, sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to be condescending. It, it uh, happens all the time. I do it all the time without meaning to. <laughs> so, um, faith, the root word of the word faith is um, confidi or confidence, which means to trust in or trust, to trust in something or someone, to trust in something or someone. And so that's my personal de uh, definition of faith. Okay. And so, but, but but that doesn't get to the heart of it. So within Christianity, your definition of faith doesn't work. Oh, that's okay. For you, it doesn't. No, no, no. For Christianity, it doesn't, because the Bible has a definition of faith as well that isn't just trust. Okay, so so basically, you can you can hold to your definitions, but I cannot hold to mine. I didn't say you couldn't hold to yours. I said yours was inconsistent with Christianity. So is mine, by the way. Okay. Um, and so, in in what way is it? In what way? Um, in what way? Sure, because faith being synonymous with trust is, which is what you're you're saying, right? Your your etymological etymological usage of faith is based on trust. Right. Right. Yeah. So it is your exercise of faith is I trust X. Right. Correct. And I would ask someone, why do you trust X? So, for example, I'm sitting in a chair. I, I trust that this chair will hold up my weight. And if you were here, you would probably trust that this chair holds up my weight and your weight, too. I mean, it's a sturdy chair. But. If somebody says, why do you trust it? I can point to, hey, here's the construction, here's this, you know, and, and all these other things. And then they'll say, are you absolutely confident? No, but I'm trusting it. That That is trust that X is true, which is separate from faith being the reason why you trust something. Faith as an epistemology, not, not acceptance or confidence in the fact, but as an epistemology which is what we see in like Hebrews 11, 1, where it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That sort of biblical right. uh, definition of faith is talking about not trust in, but warrant for the trust in. It is saying that faith is the evidence, not faith in the evidence, but faith is the evidence. And that's why when I talk about faith, if you say, Hey, do you trust that chair? Yeah, I do. Why? I would never say, I take it on faith. But when somebody says, hey, do you trust in Jesus? And you ask why, they will say, I take it on faith. And so there's the usage of the word faith as an epistemology. And then there's the usage of the word faith as in trust. I have no problem 
with trusting things. I just don't like to use the word faith for trust because faith has multiple uses. And what happens is somebody will use it in the sense that you would to say, I trust something. And then they will also use it in an epistemological sense. And they do an equivocation fallacy bait and switch to bolster the faith that is as an epistemology, which is garbage with, oh, I'm just saying I trust. That's why I don't use faith in that way. Okay, because um, I think they're in error when they use it the way you've described. I think they're in error. You, who's in error? Um, the, the the people that use it in the way you've just described. Except that that's what the Bible in that tells way. them. That's what the Bible tells them. Well, no, I'll give you an example. Um, so basically, um, I I have a I think there's a definable difference between belief and faith. Those are two separate words. I, I agree. They mean two separate things. I agree. Belief is the acceptance and of so, a proposition. Okay. And so faith to me, um, um, lack of evidence that the thing exists, and you're putting your faith and trust in it, before the outcome, I believe, can be demonstrated. And I'll give you an example. So let's say I want a child, and I have a wife, mm-hmm. and I have a, pro- I have a projected future that my wife will bear a child, and I'm going to put my faith in the fact that I will – we will engage in sexual intercourse, and through that process, I'm trusting that I can have a child. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. I, so but I'm, I'm, trusting, fine, I'm fine with all yes. of that, but how does that square with Hebrews 11.1? 1? Because Hebrews 11.1 1 is not about putting your faith, it's not about putting your confidence in something. It is saying faith is the evidence, not the confidence. No, faith is the evidence. That, that doesn't, well, what it means by the, it, um, well, I have a problem. Maybe I don't know. If, I don't know if that particular verse was translated correctly because evidence is a sticky word. Evidence, right? Um, it's a sticky word because if I have no, I have no evidence that my child is here yet. I have no evidence. There is no evidence. No, no, no. But no, no. But your confidence, uh, your confidence uh, isn't. There's evidence that humans have children. The evidence is that humans have children. They do it by sexual intercourse, despite what you might have seen on a, on a Fry and Laurie sketch. Um, and that at the current state, if you proceed as you are, barring some other medical unknown or whatever else, it is it has some likelihood of producing a child. And when it doesn't, then you go in for medical evidence and everything. None of this is you can you're putting your confidence in the evidence about human sexuality and creating offspring. Your confidence is in the evidence. And that's separate from saying that your confidence is the evidence. No, my, my confidence is in a future event that I have no, uh, I, my, 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 my confidence is no. in a future event that I have no present evidence for. No, you have tons of prevent, present evidence. Your confidence is that something is no, a I likely my outcome. My child doesn't exist. It doesn't, oh my God, it doesn't my child matter. Doesn't exist. <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh my, would you stop for a second? If uh, if I have a die in my hand and I've rolled it a bunch of times and it's come up with a five every single time and there's one, two, three, four, five, six on there, am I going to be on the on, on 50 rows and rolls in a row that came up with five? Am I going to be extremely confident that the result is going to be somewhere between one and six? You betcha. Am I going to be slightly more confident that it's coming, that it's going to likely to roll a five because the past data show that that is the most likely outcome for this particular die? Yes. Your confidence, I'll give it your confidence that having sex leads to children is based on the evidence that having sex leads to children. Mm -hmm. I think you're missing my example. So I'll change the example. Um, Let's say a visionary. I'll use a visionary as an example, like a Steve Jobs. I, he had a he had he had something in his mind before it existed, and then he had the faith and confidence to pursue its ev- inevitable. Um, I don't see how this uh, is relevant. I, I really don't see how this is relevant because yes, people have confidence in their ideas, and some of them come to fruition, and some of them don't. But the proof's in the pudding. And what I'm saying is that Hebrews eleven one describes, continues to describe a faith that is the evidence to believers all around the world 
And I have a, and, and it, it, pre it precedes my usage of this. But at the end of the day, uh, I don't like to use the word faith just as confidence because faith has multiple uses. And I think that leads to equivocation fallacy. If you want to say that you have faith that you're, that if you have sex, your wife's going to, you and your wife are going to have an offspring. Cool. Um, that's not the same thing that we're talking about when we're talking about people saying, oh, I just have faith. I ha I take, I believe this because of faith. Your belief yeah. that you and your wife are likely have an offspring is based on the evidence. Yeah, I was going to amplify that we care about the evidence. You know, we don't care about the name of it. Um, if there's evidence for God, let's let's hear the evidence for God. If there's no evidence for God, then maybe you're believing something that you shouldn't believe be believing in. Yeah. Maybe, um, um, but what do you do when the evidence has not arrived? You withhold your belief. Yeah, you you should not be convinced. I, I won't have to, you, should, you should not be convinced of something. You, you should not. Jesus. And I won't. I won't. I won't have. I won't have sex with my wife. Okay. You you have plenty of evidence no, 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 that no, 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 people no. fuck and they make children. Come on. <laughs> I am very I am very 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 happy, Dave, for your wife. Goodbye. <laughs> if you don't think that you have evidence about what happens when people have sex, you are literally too stupid to be allowed to have sex because we can't trust that you're going to do it safely. If you don't understand that the reason you're convinced of this, that if you and your wife have unprotected sex, it is likely to result in a child, is the fact that that is how every fucking human on the planet has come to existence. <laughs> and you're like, well, a few I test can't know for right? sure. I guess I should want to have sex with my wife. I should send her a box of fucking chocolates and a congratulations card that she's not going to have the offspring of somebody who doesn't seem to understand that they're actually relying on evidence. I don't know what else to do. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go, Don. Uh, David in Hawaii has scientific evidence that God exists. Uh, actually, I, I, I think. Hi, David. How are you? Hi, Matt. I am wonderful. It's an honor I, to talk to you, sir. It says here the call screener has it listed that you are in fact a theist, like you believe in a god. No, I'm an atheist. Ah, that's what I thought. You're listed as a theist, and it says here you have scientific evidence that God exists, the Higgs boson's God particle, because it says God particle, duh. Is this all just a, a, an attempt at a joke, and you're not trying to prove a God? Well, uh, Stephen Hawking, the same scientist, referred to it as the God particle, and you know, he's a well-respected— Do you think calling something the God particle proves that there's a God? Well, he's a, a famed... Uh, Do you think that calling something the God particle proves that there's a God? No, I think it's just a simple... Me one neither. Place. The time wasting. Uh, it, 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 it's bad enough that scientists do things like talk about mitochondrial Eve, and then the creationists are like, see, even the scientists think there's an Eve. And that's not what that's about. When yeah. atheists are calling in to talk about the God particle proving a God, I'm yeah. I give up. It's even a category error. Uh, mitochondrial Eve is a title, not a, not a person. It actually moves around as people, people die off. <laughs> <laughs> um all right i'm gonna i'm gonna, like it's I, like uh, oldest person living is is it is a title that, that changes every day <laughs> uh i'm not convinced that this is a real e either minor in arizona you're on with don and matt hello yeah um I, I got uh i want to call in because i got a grandson who's atheist and he says he listens to this show uh, sometimes, and I want to call in because I got an argument against atheism. Okay. Um, well, it would be nice if you had an argument for a god because there is no such thing as an argument against atheism. My atheism is just I'm not convinced there's a god. So the way to end it is to convince me that there's a god. Well, maybe, okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, maybe I can, I mean, that's where I want to go. That's where I want to go with it. So let me lay this out there for you. 
Uh, we can kick it around with the boots a little bit here, okay? Okay. Sounds good. Because what 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 it, what the call screener already has listed here um, doesn't bode well. Because it starts with how many people are there in the world? Is that where you're going? That's, well, yes. That, it's, we're talking about a mathematical uh, number about how many people we got here on the on the earth. Yeah, about and seven. You're going to talk about, about all the people that we about, have. Yeah. About 7.8 billion. What does that show? That's right. Now, that means mathematically that you can only have one guy. There's, there's no way around that. You can't argue with it. I'm not following. How does, that, how does that work out? Did, did, you, got all these people. did you just say that there's no way around it and we can't argue it? Well, I'm, uh, it's unless you go tell me. You see, I work out. I work out on the ranch. I got my own ranch. I've been doing that for fifty odd years, and I'm not going to put one cowboy on a single set of horns. You got a hundred head of cattle, and you only got one cowboy out there. That means no matter how many people you got on this earth, you only going to have one guy. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. You okay. can't argue with that. Oh, yes, yes, I fucking can. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to. And it's going to be fun. I promise, Miner. Um, if there are... So so, does that apply to, let's say, um, horses too? Like if you had a horse ranch? Well, I, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you could... And any kind of livestock out there or something, I don't know what they do with them horses. But sure. if you got but, a bunch of horses riding around out there, you're not going to put a, a got, person got on every single I, one of them. I, 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 yes, I get it. So go back in time to when Montana had no people in it, but had Montana did have horses and cows. How many cowboys existed for the horses and cows in Montana back then? Well, that's... Uh, okay, but that was no, 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 wild. Okay. Answer the wild question. Thing. Answer the question. If there were only horses and cows out there and no people, how many cowboys did were out there for all those horses and cows? Well, there's there's no one there because they're all wild. Correct. And so we can have 7.8 billion people here and not have any gods at all. Well, the come out, come out now. I can spit the, in the dirt the and call him. He's not going to put any money in the bank. The time to believe there's a cowboy is when there's evidence for a cowboy, and the time to believe there's a god is when there's evidence for a god. Not based on the number of people. And by the way, you still, with 7.8 billion people, you could have multiple gods. Just like with 50 head of cattle, you could have four or five cowboys working that ranch. It may not be the smartest thing or the best thing, but it could be done. So all of your math is wrong. And you haven't come any closer to proving that there's a God. Well, I, I think that's going to stand up about as, as long as a two-legged mule. It's, okay. you, it, no one's going to say that, yeah, sure, there's a hundred different gods for every man on, on the earth. I know I, Don Baker, he's not going to say that. He knows there's I only agree. one God because no. he is more than one man. Based, based on my experience, each person has their own idea of what a god is, and so there's probably as many gods as there are people. Thereabouts. Subtract the atheists. Yeah, we we, we lost him there. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm not going to make. I don't know how serious he was anyway. I'm pretty sure there are people in the chat that were just you know screaming, "Oh no no no, no he's a fake, he's a fake." I don't know because I don't see chat, but I know that they do that for damn near every caller anyway. Uh, I have no idea if he's fake or not, but. If your argument is, hey, look at all these people, that proves there can only be one God, you have a lot more work to do. It's like that, you know, <laughs> a miracle occurs section in the in the, in the proof there. Uh, yeah, that's not the way math works. That's not the way cowboys work. That's not the way gods work. Yeah. But you couldn't have a hundred. One, one of the more creative things. And, 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 you know, he may actually get credit for, for having said something new. <laughs> today <laughs> i've never heard that one that yeah that one i'm not, it's never happened but we've got oscar in mexico you're on with don and matt how are you oh hi matt i'm i'm great thank you well as good as i can be it's, it's a bit hard because of the covid and all of that you know sure i just 
get get on with your your question, and we'll see what we can do. Good minute. I I was talking. I mean, I decided to talk here because I wanted to discuss a bit about you know, it's a bit weird of a question, but about the search of some sort of spiritual meaning in life when you're an atheist. It's a, I don't know what yeah, spiritual means. Yeah, you, you need to tell us what you mean by spiritual life because the word spiritual yeah, means, uh, yeah. means, so, means so many different things to people that I view it as fairly meaningless. Uh, so what is it yeah. you're looking for? I'm, I mean it more in the sense of a drive to keep doing things because, I mean, I'm, I could say it in closer to the interpretation of Sam Harris than the interpretation of the Bible or the religions. You know, in a way of, in a way of I th- what? I can take a, I, I, I can mean, take a shot at that. I, I'm not even sure I understood it, so go for it. Well, he's saying, you know, a drive to do something. I, it's like, I have a, I have a finite life here. I'm, I'm very lucky to be here. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be here forever. I have some good health right now and I'm going to take advantage of it and work hard, make some money, uh, save for the future. I'm going to, you know, do, do some uh, volunteer things to help out and make the world a better place. Um, and at the end of the day, it, you know, it, when I, I'm close to death. I can look back on my life and say, "Hey, I, I did a pretty good job with the life I, I, I had." Yeah, I'm fine with yeah. talking about whether well, you know, in a in a world where I don't believe in a God, what is the meaning and value of life? That's fine. I just still don't understand what, what you mean by spirituality. I mean, it's it's a bit complicated because i in a way i was closer to the sam harris interpretation that is like the exploration of self and what what's the word in the self or the not or the the self because you know when you do not have the mystical safety net that is the idea of a god covering your back or that there's a nirvana or all of it all of that stuff it's your sense of self becomes malleable and even slightly insignificant in the grandeur of the cosmos it's and it's a bit but but what if follow what if oscar religions have given us an inflated sense of self-value and an absence of religion actually puts our sense of value much more accurately where it should be to to note that a world without a god means that we are irrelevant to the cosmos and that we are in fact a tiny, tiny, tiny little insignificant thing in the grand scheme of thing is actually accurate. Um, So it's like like religions are telling you that you're going to inherit a billion dollars when you're 40. And we're saying, where's the proof of that? And they can't come up with it. And I'm saying it would be a bad idea to live your life as if you're going to be a billionaire at 40 without actual evidence for that. No, I, I'm perfectly aware of that. I do not. I'm not really like um, um, advising to take the inflated idea that religion gives to the self because I know the solution. I became an atheist after this this idea that praying can help and can, you know, God is there for us. Failed me because all my family was praying that an uncle was going to get better when he was ill and he died and for a moment I thought, Oh God oh my god oh my gosh, God is a jerk but no, then I realized no, it's not that God is a jerk, it's that maybe there's no God. Maybe this idea is just uh it's here to give people a sense of comfort even if it's false. I understand that religion is in a way poisoning the mind by uh, distorting the concept we have in reality, but once we are in this position where we understand that we are finite, we are small, we are not special, we don't have to be the center of the cosmos that most religions give us as a position, what... how do people cope with that? Because it's it's a bit harder. I mean, I know that I'm coming a bit from a position of fear because yeah. I have some of 
I have I have pondered a bit about a bit about mortality here because of the current situation and partially because I also have um, some chronic conditions regarding my respiratory system. So in a way, I have to come to terms with the fact that yeah. I probably might die during this quarantine because if the virus enter, I'm done. But but that's like the thing. How how do you people cope with that? That the fact that we are just limited beings in the grand scheme of the universe. Because I, I think I'm what you're describing myself. is uh, is what would be called ex 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 existential um, angst, right? Of of trying to figure out what to do with yourself, right? If you're, if you just realize that it's just you and you and trying to figure out the world. And, and this is something that I think a lot of atheists have to wrestle with. And uh, uh, the answer might be, you know, pursue things that give you pleasure and that will, you know, make the world a better place. And, and, you know, as I said earlier, at the end of the, at the end of your life, uh, you will, have something good to look back on and you will have left good memories for their people make a maybe a positive legacy i mean that's that's the best we can hope for hey it, oscar is it manejamos that is cope with what in, in spanish it, it, it cope with it would would that be manejamos um oh, it's, manejamos uh, it's complicated I uh, no, I don't think there's a proper word with to for cope. Cope. Yeah. Of cope because Spanish English has a lot of specificity with its terms. I mean, it's the with the word smile, for instance. Yeah, I was, have, I was trying. The, the, no, I'm sorry. I have go ahead. Like, 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 leer, like, smear, like, all of that. All of those words have specific meanings. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. in Spanish, we all only have the word sonrisa, and that word is nowhere near as useful to describe. So we really don't have a word of to cope. To cope, yeah. To cope is, and so it's actually a little harder because I'm also living with a religious family. They do know that I'm an atheist, but if I have, if I want someone to talk about mortality and the finality of the human existence, uh, it always ends a little muddled with the idea of spirituality that I have to seek of God, that I have to read the book of John or whatever. Yeah. My, my so Spanish it's a little hard. My, my Spanish is terrible, and I was looking for a way that, that I might do this in, in, in a way that would be a good clip for Spanish-speaking people, because whether or not the universe cares with you, I understand that can be difficult to, to, to cope with, but it's because you've had a false expectation delivered that the universe should care about you. When really the only thing that matters is that we care about each other. So, tu eres importante para ti y para mí, y yo soy importante para mí y para los demás, uh, or uh, to others. I don't, I don't know if I got that right, but my Spanish is fucking awful. So, the best I can do is say that if I'm mired in existential angst, if I'm feeling inferior because I've just discovered that the universe doesn't care about me. I should, I can take comfort in the fact that the number of people who cared about me, the number of entities that cared about me didn't change one bit when I got that information. I just now have an accurate sampling. And it's like Trump trying to keep people who were infected on the boat from being tested because he didn't want to inflate the numbers. It doesn't affect how many people are actually infected. It just it affects how many people we know are infected. And so he's falsely lowering the number, or was a couple of months ago, and now we have a little bit more accurate number. And so when I find out that the universe does not, in fact, care about me, and that there, to the best of my knowledge, there are no gods who care about me, the number of people who actually cared about me didn't change. I just yeah. got a more accurate view of reality. I think I think Oscar, I think you need to reach out and find a, an atheist group there or a skeptics group and and make some friends there where you can uh, talk about these things um, with with people who are sort of your friends and closer to you. Yeah, I appreciate the call, Oscar. I, I got to move on. We got I got two more calls I want to try and get to and we're already over time, but we really appreciate oh. the call. Okay, wait. Well, thank you, Matt. 
it's with the police here. Thank you. And now I'm going to get 25 emails about how absolutely awful my, my Spanish was and everything. And I know, I already knew. I have I took two years of Spanish. You, 30 you years. did better than me that I would have done. 30, 30, 35 years ago, I think. Um, I, I think I can I think I can address this, this one real quick. Ben in California, how are you? Hey, I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, you're, you're basically asking, you've heard me say that I don't have much of an opinion on Jesus' existence. And, and yep. you're wondering why I don't just come out and say he didn't exist? Yes. Yeah, because claiming somebody did not exist is a statement that requires evidence to support it. And the fact that there isn't sufficient evidence to conclude that he did exist doesn't mean that you can conclude that he didn't. It's just like saying that's if, fair. if the defendant is on trial and there's not enough in information or there's not enough evidence to conclude that they're guilty, that does not mean that I can conclude that they're innocent or say that they're innocent. On a personal level, do you believe that Jesus existed? Yes. Wow, with no evidence. And what about Moses? Wow, I knew you were going to lose your shit over this. So first of all, um, I'm not saying, first of all, there's not no evidence, okay? Um, if we look at it as just a man, as just a person with this name, or now, did, if you ask me, does the character in the Bible exist as written? My answer is no. Do I think there is a real person at the at the at, in, at the center of that? My answer is yes, and my answer is also yes that there may be multiple people at the center of that. Not that there's any sort of reason to clearly believe in a. Jesus of Nazareth individual, because we don't even have good information about names or anything else. But it's not extraordinary to say somebody existed and served as a foundation for a religion. What's extraordinary are the other claims about them. Okay. Can I ask you if the, any evidence that the Jews built the pyramids or crossed the desert? Uh, I, I'm aware of no good evidence, and I'm aware of evidence to the contrary. Like, there's not a mixing of languages and stuff. This is why, when you know, you get back to Finkelstein's book on um, on the story of the Exodus. I, I don't think the ev Exodus actually ever happened. I don't think that Jews were ever enslaved in Egypt. There's countless things in the Bible that should have evidence for them, individual claims that don't. But uh, and and whether whether or not there was an actual Moses or whether Moses was a, a figure that was an amalgamation or whatever, we have nothing outside of there and this history. So the thing that I'm saying I'm I'm fine accepting is that there was probably a person or a collection of people at the center of this. I'm not saying yes, I am affirming that Jesus of Nazareth, as depicted in the Gospels, was an extant historical figure. No, uh, I think that that can't be established beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, but I'm fine with the notion. It doesn't matter to me. It's, I'm fine with the notion that there's a person there. I'm not believing that this person performed miracles and was divine and did all this other stuff. This, this isn't a big deal. Well, for you, it's not a big deal. But when I, I know that there's millions of people that believe in characters, that there's no Moses, no evidence, Jesus, no evidence, pyramids were built by the, the Jews, no evidence. Um, cross the desert, no evidence. How can people, how can you have an argument with somebody if they can't, if, if you have nothing to stand on? There's, there's no ground to stand on. And I don't understand how you can engage it with people. I'm amazed. I mean, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I'm not going to put my bong down. I want you to know that. But okay. I, well, I, I, <laughs> you're making sense. There are some people who can't make sense when they're, when they're, when they're on their bong. Uh, here's the thing. You have, you have Paul, who... Do you think Paul existed? No. Okay. Uh, then yeah. I don't know what to tell you because now you have departed from even the most batshit. Well, because I have no, because I don't, I don't have an education in that, and that's why I don't know. I mean, if well, wait, you think no, no, Paul, no, 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 it, it, say I don't know. Not Ben. The fact that you don't have an education in something doesn't mean that you can conclude somebody doesn't exist. Okay, then, then that was not fair of me to say that, and I take it back. I'm sorry. You're right. You won okay. me over. What can I say? There you go. If you actually go do all, some research, all probably on it, existed. If if you if you go if, do some, if there's evidence of oh someone existing, I believe. If you go do some research, go read what Carrier has to say. Go read what Fitz has to say. Paul existed. That's just okay. 
There's not not even the most batshit crazy historians suggest that Paul didn't exist because we have writings. Hey, okay, you caught me. You caught me. I know nothing about that. I'm sorry. And yet you're shocked that I would be too lenient. And yet every time you talk about Jesus, you say there's no evidence. Well, that's not true. Because you got evidence, obviously, that Paul existed. And oh my God, Ben! I'm we switched the topic I'm back to Jesus. Jesus. Now you keep saying there's no evidence for Jesus, and that's not true because right. Paul is evidence in that he reports that he talked to the disciples who knew Jesus personally. Is it is it secondhand hearsay testimony? Yes, yeah. but you don't get to say it's not evidence. You can say it's not sufficient, but you don't get to say it's not evidence. Really? That's so. Just because somebody says something, you, you're going to take that as evidence. So, like, aliens exist. Yeah, it's the weak earth, flat, blah, blah, blah. Wow, Ben. Put, weak tea. Put the fucking bong down for a second. Because what okay, I the said... The bong is down, actually. What I said was, you can think that it's not sufficient evidence... But you don't get to say it's not evidence. Anecdotal evidence is evidence. When you're, are you? Do you have a significant other? I wish. Okay. Have you ever had a significant other? Yes. Okay. When they come to you and tell you what happened during the day at work for them, do you believe them? Yes. Yeah. And if you came to me and told me that your significant other had a shitty day at work, do you think I'm going to believe you? Yes, because we're just talking about something mundane. We're not talking about the existence exactly. of something that... And, and when Paul is talking about how he met Peter and Peter talked to him about Jesus, that's all still mundane because all they're talking about is whether a person that they interacted with. There's a difference between saying there's evidence, be it sufficient or not, that Jesus existed, and whether or not there's sufficient evidence that Jesus performed miracles. You need to be able to separate those two in your mind so that you don't sound like a loon or go out. But, oh, my God, I can't believe Matt thinks that Jesus existed. Matt doesn't think that Jesus is fucking magic. Right. That's it. I got one more call I got to get to. I, now you can pick you up so the much. bong. Turn the ass Yep. Hit your bong, bro. All right, last call for the day. We have Corey in South Carolina who has evidently faith in a God, but fears that they're serving an evil God. Tell us what's going on, Corey. Yeah. Um, basically, I was on the Talk Even show. Great show, by the way. Um, but uh, they told me to do some research, and I did do some research. I always believed in a God, right? Which so, God? So, um, uh, the Bible the bible believe in god the, okay well the you realize, biblical god. god okay you realize that there are over a thousand denominations that all say they believe in the biblical god and they all believe different things so but all right go ahead tell us your story yeah, yeah and that's not the only god in the bible too uh, <laughs> Moloch, ball yeah. Uh, but yeah, they told me to do some research, which I did. I honestly took what they said to heart, and I actually looked up. He was talking about. Man, Corey, I was, was talking this, about. Corey, was this today? Uh, no, this was uh, like a couple weeks back. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. So, all uh, right, but they were told told me to uh, in order to. Basically, I was bringing up my uh, personal experience, and they just cut it off right there and say, hold up, you're just ignoring the, you're accepting the hits and ignoring the misses. And I was like, yeah, that's true. It's like a lot of Christians will look at their personal experience and say that. I can also look at, uh, like, what's going on. For some reason, I can just not, just not just accept that there's no God. And I don't know if it's this, a personal emotion that I've been having with this and it's just brought up or is there like a reason for it? Because you I know can say there may be some comfort out, in, in, in this idea that, that God is looking out for you and going to, going to, you know, help you through the tough times and these sorts of things. But, you know, in, unless you have evidence for such a thing, it's just wishful thinking. Yeah, you, you mentioned that you can't get to the point where you're convinced there is no God. I don't know why you think you need to get to that point. Um, we can't prove there is no God. I, I, I am, there could be a God on the other side of the universe under a rock. Yeah, I am convinced <laughs> that, there, that the various gods that I've been presented with, that they are not, in fact, real. 
I, I am convinced of that. Am I absolutely certain? Nope. Uh, am I sure or but, extremely confident that no gods exist? No. But it seems preposterous uh, to think that a god exists when you don't have good evidence for it. And so instead of worrying about whether or not you are convinced there are no gods, what you should be doing is saying, right now I'm convinced that this god is real. Do I have a good reason for that? And if it turns out you don't, then you can't believe in that God. It's like, it's like, do you, do you have good reason to believe Corey that there's a $500 bill in my wallet? Uh, no, I, I don't either. I see evidence of you. Yeah. If I were to tell you Corey, that there is not a $500 bill in my wallet, you'd probably take my word for it. Yeah. I would probably take your word for it out of this being sure. natural. Yes. But, I would. But if I but if I told you that there was a $500 bill in my wallet, you would want evidence for that, right? Yeah, I would want evidence for it, but I would probably <laughs> assume that you are telling the truth. Oh, okay. What if I told you I was worth $4.5 billion? Okay, then if then I have to see evidence. If you tell me, yeah. uh, okay. like if you're telling me you're homeless and you worth... Four point five million dollars. I'm definitely going to need proof. I don't know where the homeless. It's a remarkable thing. claim, right? I don't know where the homeless thing came from, but let's say that you know, I just tell you, I'm worth four point five billion dollars. Uh, that I have this much, you know, in liquid assets. You would expect more evidence. If I said I had five dollars, would you expect? Would you be looking for any evidence? Uh, no, because that's this. I yeah. mean, you wouldn't ask somebody this like perfect. this is perfect. Have five dollars is this like? Yep, this is perfect. We're all on the same page. Now, so what we have are claims that are just not that big a deal and claims that are pretty significant. Is the claim that a God exists between $5 and $4.5 billion, or is it even more significant than the $4.5 million? It's even more significant. I mean, I think you, you, the value of... Uh, well, Four point five billion dollars exists, right? So, so <laughs> if yeah. I say, if I say, hey, I've got four point five billion dollars, and Don says there's a god, you would want evidence from both of us, but Don would have to provide better evidence, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. I get what you're saying, and like the evidence and stuff. Like, it's just more of a emotional point. If I'm wrong, it's like, yeah. like, then I'm, let's say, for instance, uh, how can I say this? Okay, let's say I fully adapt to being an atheist, right? And I'm wrong. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong all not the time. seeing something. And well, I want to We're going to Pascal's something. Wagers. We're going to Pascal's wages, what we're doing. Right, Corey? What? You're getting ready to express Sorry, a very Pascal's wager, right? You're basically going to say, if you believe there's a God and you're wrong, it's no big deal. But if you don't believe there's a God and you're wrong, that is a big deal, right? Okay, well. Is that what you were going to It's more of a physical emotion. I don't want to put any wagers out there. I don't want to put any fallacies out there. I understand so, so think, that. It's just something I feel Think of it this way, Corey. Than... Corey, think of it this way. Think of... Uh, a belief that you don't have good evidence for is a liability. It's it's something it's something that could lead you astray, and you want to get rid of those things. You want to only have beliefs that have good evidence behind them, and you want to you want to disbelieve things that you don't have good evidence for. And so the God claim, since you don't have evidence for it, or until you do have evidence for it, you should just put it aside and say I. I don't need this in my little like little kid. I'm going to lug around with me. Yeah. The t the time to believe something is after you have good evidence, not before. And so, if God is even right. more Im Im unlikely or more extraordinary than the claim that I have 4.5 billion dollars, then certainly we would need more evidence for that claim than for this. And and the only question left is, do we have evidence? of that quality for any God. Um, can you repeat that again? Sorry. Okay. 
we have ev- God is God is a more extraordinary claim than that I have four point five billion dollars, and so yeah. God would require yeah. God would require more evidence the, the, that God exists would require more evidence than we would require for the fact that I have four and a half billion dollars. Do we have evidence sufficient to reach the conclusion that a God exists? Well, I don't, well, I would say personally, I don't know. It's like when I came on this show, it's like I didn't know there was like arguments and stuff. I'm, I'm looking up these things. So I don't want to be wrong into what I'm trying to find. I'm just looking for the truth. And yeah. so far, my conclusion, like if our biblical God is real, I mean, yeah, you can't condone slavery in any type of way. The Bible does says it. And, Anybody that tells us it's not true is just lying to yourself. Well, it's a, it's and an if you say you don't, it's an important in the question, Bible, right? But but uh, you know, if there's debate, then presumably there's not good evidence, right? We don't debate whether whether the sky's blue, right? Yeah, because anybody can go outside and look at the sky and say, "Oh, that's blue." Yep. On that note, Corey, I, let me just say this: keep questioning. Keep being willing to say, I don't know, when you don't know, and try not try to make sure that if you believe something, that you have a really good reason for it. Because if it turns out that you're wrong, there may or may not be consequences. For example, if there is a God and you believe in the wrong God, how is the God that exists going to look at you? Um. Probably be very mad. Like, really, I already read uh, the Untold Gospel and the Apocalypse of Peter. I read these things. So here's the, and here's the those follow-up. things are scary. So I understand. Here's the follow-up, like, though, Corey. If there is a God, and that God is not doing everything in its power to make it very clear to you that they exist and they are the one true God for you to pay attention to, is that your fault or God's fault? Uh, <laughs> it would be God's fault, but there you, there go. you go. That's a little Good bit answer. of a easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad I get to talk to y'all because I, I, I only got religious people around me. Um, if I go to them about something, they're always going to say, oh, why are you questioning? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Yeah. Why are you begging? It's like, it will come. You must believe in something. And all I'm doing is looking for the answers. Why is my answers not giving me to God? It's if God is out there and real, yeah. right? Expand your circle Why of friends. Give me the answers to do so. Yeah. If there's a God and he cares about you and me, Corey, and we have sat here and we have looked around and we have hit our knees and we have begged, if there's any God here, please give us some evidence. Please show yourself. Please give me some direction. Please let me know what I'm going to do. And we get nothing fuck any God that doesn't answer a plead like that because they're playing, they're playing favors. They're not demonstrating any interest in me. They're not demonstrating any love for me until some God gives me five minutes of their time. They're not worth an instant of mine. On that note, Corey, we got to let you know, but I want to recommend that not only should you possibly reach out to recoveringfromreligion.org, you don't have to be an atheist to to go to recoveringfromreligion.org. It's just a way to have these conversations. Also, the ACA Discord is available, and I'm sure that somebody will get a a link up there to the the Discord. But you can also contact organizations like American Atheists because there are local atheist groups in South Carolina and probably in your area and probably with some people that you know or near to you so that you can actually interact with people other than being stuck around religious people all the time. Uh, I want to thank you, Corey. I w- wish you good luck. And you can always email TV at community.org if you need us to point you to resources a little better. Uh, keep going. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And on that note. Thank you. And I- oh, thank you. And <laughs> <laughs> I, oops. I, you were done. I wanted to let you wind it down because it's 630. Thanks, everybody. The the crew who's here every week who gets all this stuff done, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you uh, to Don as well. You, you all are awesome. And now we're going to go have dinner. The rest of you, take care of yourself. Try to keep yourself safe both from uh, COVID-19 and from uh, any sort of violence or hostilities related to protests. The Atheist Community of Austin is a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization promoting 
uh, dedicated to the promotion of the separation of religion, government, and positive atheism. But the community is filled up largely of humanists who care about other people, where there is equality, and we are all upset by tragic loss of life, especially when it impacts a broad portion of a community, a marginalized community. And we want you to know that our efforts toward a better world, a world free of religion, also include a world where equality and justice are available to people regardless of race, sexuality, gender identity, gender expression, anything in those, in those areas. We are with you and we hope that the world regains its sanity soon and hopefully we'll be able to be back in the building uh, to say this united jointly rather than separated. But you are not alone, and there are organizations you can reach out to, including Recovering from Religion, Secular Therapy, Pro Therapy Project, Freedom from Religion Foundation, American Atheists, and countless others, some specializing in death and dying and loss, others specializing in addiction. There are There's a group out there for you. And if you're in the Austin area, that group may well be the Atheist Community of Austin. Please stop by the website. Anybody who can donate and support the organization, we greatly appreciate it. But if you can't, you are still welcome and encouraged to come down when we're open and be with the rest of us for a dose of hopefully a sane world. Take care. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? No, 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 you're done.